What's up guys, my name is Bart Comar and welcome to my shop and my very first and last shop tour in this space. So I'm gonna explain to you guys a little bit later what that means, but I kind of wanted you guys to see what this space was about, what I do in here, and now it's pretty much the way it looks 90% of the time. I just finished up a couple of projects and we need to get it cleaned up so we can do a proper shop tour and let you guys see all the tools that I work with and how I came about getting all these tools because I'm a firm believer in not buying brand new tools. So right now, this is my shop and let's get going. So welcome to the Comar Project or welcome to the Comar Shop. All right guys, so as you can see, the shop looks a little bit different now and the arrangement's different because typically this is how I have it set up. And the shop is a basement shop, so everything has to come through the kitchen. And this shop is 12 and a half feet wide by 40 feet long. So if you can imagine just a long wide hallway, that's my shop. And right in the middle of it is my assembly table and my table saw. This saw is a rigid TS2412 and I picked this thing up on Craigslist for a hundred bucks. It was covered with rust all over and I probably spent a day restoring this thing and for what it is right now, it works great. But I could always use more power. On the right side of the saw, I have a storage cabinet that I built and it keeps a lot of my jigs, some of my push sticks and a whole lot of tape in here. Because every woodworker needs tape, a lot of it. In front of the saw is my assembly slash outfit table. And this table has seen its share of work and abuse. I actually found this thing in the trash. Somebody left it by a dumpster and I swooped it up and picked it up. So it was free. And the great thing about it was, is it had a vise inside of it. I opened up the drawer and sure enough, there was a vise that I use all the time now. And this table does have height adjustable legs. There's a couple of bolts underneath that when you turn them, it'll actually lower or raise the table for you, which worked out really great because then I was able to adjust it to my table saw. Behind me is probably my favorite thing that I've actually built in this shop, and that's my hand tool wall. It has basically everything that I need at arm's reach when I'm working at the assembly table. I have all of my Stanley hand planes from number two to number seven. I'm missing a one and an eight, so if somebody wants to send me a couple of hand planes, by all means, I wouldn't say no. I also have my hammers, all of my measuring tools, my screwdrivers, my chisels, and all the other specialty hand planes that I use from time to time. Now I don't get to use hand planes that often, but when I do, it's an absolute joy to work with all this stuff. Right below the tool wall, I have this cabinet, which actually came with my assembly table. This was also free and in the trash. And inside here, I have some sharpening stuff, some odds and ends that I kind of keep around. I keep all of my cases for all my tools, and I keep my track saw in here. But more importantly, this is where I put all of my stickers from all the other makers in the community. So if you have a sticker, reach out to me. I would love to put it on my little old, cheap, free workbench. Next to the sticker cabinet is an old Ikea cabinet. I keep my gloves in here. I have spare hinges in here. All of my fasteners are here in organizers. I have this awesome Wilton vise. It was 30 bucks on Craigslist. Drill charging station and all of my drills sitting on a wine rack because we were gonna throw it out and I figured why not have all my drills displayed beautifully. Most of these drills I got on Craigslist for under 50 bucks, except for the Bosch. I ended up buying this drill driver set, which was $100 for both, and I absolutely love these things. It's 12 volt, and they have more than enough power to push everything that I need in this shop. Next to that, we have a metal cabinet that I got for, I think, 30 bucks online. It was either Craigslist or Facebook, and this houses all of my finishing chemicals. So like your mineral spirits, your stains, your lacquers, things of that nature. Up above it is a plywood cabinet that houses all of my sandpaper for my five inch orbital. And it's really cool because all of my grits are separated so I can just come over here, grab what I need and get back to work. 
Next we have probably my favorite thing to work on. And this is a 1800s workbench that I did a video on. I did a full restoration on this thing. If you guys wanna check it out, there's a link in the description, but I love working on this thing. I don't get to do it as much as I want to, but when I do, it's an awesome experience because of its age. It's not because it's very well built, it is very light and it's got a wiggle to it, but the history behind this thing gives me some nostalgia about it and makes me enjoy the work a lot more. I'm probably gonna end up using this thing as a desk in our office at some point and build a Rubo split bench, but for right now, I enjoy this thing as much as I can. Oh, and I paid 100 bucks for this workbench. I did, I know, don't be jealous, 100 bucks. Moving to the first corner of the shop, I have this old cabinet that I picked up online for I think a hundred bucks and it needed a bunch of work. It didn't have a side, so I just lined it with a bunch of pallet wood. And I keep all the things that I don't have anywhere else to put, like some other jigs, additional hinges, files, wire brushes, handles, casters, things of that nature. On the other side, we have my clamp rack. I did a video on this along with the spray paint rack, which there's a video for that as well. I'm a huge fan of spray paint and anytime I can spray something, whether it's a lacquer or a paint, I'm gonna use a can. So it only made sense for me to have a rack since I have a lot of spray paint. This clamp rack was designed specifically for the types of clamps that I have. And I have a lot of different types of clamps which were picked up at garage sales and everywhere else. So this design works really well for me and I can just come here, grab whatever clamps I want and get back to work. And next to the clamps in the corner is where my bandsaw lives. This thing's a Steel City 14 inch bandsaw. I got it for 200 bucks on Craigslist and it has not disappointed yet because for 200 bucks, I couldn't go wrong. This is a Grizzly six inch joiner. It has a 47 inch bed. I picked this thing up for 150 bucks on Marketplace. Is it great? It has a straight cutter head and at some point, I'm gonna put a helical head in it or upgrade to an eight inch bed. This thing is okay, but would I wanna upgrade? Absolutely. Coming around past the joiner is my miter station. This thing is awesome. I absolutely love it. It's 19 feet long and it has 13 drawers and it holds my 12 inch Bosch sliding miter saw, which I'm absolutely in love with this thing. This is one of those tools that I actually picked up brand new. I think I paid 600 bucks for it and I couldn't be happier. I had a DeWalt before this and just the space saving design that the wing has here makes it so worth it for my shop and still have the depth of cut that this thing allows me to have. And then on the right side of the miter saw, I have a Performax one horsepower grinder. This thing's great. I have it set up with a stone on it right now and a brush. And then next to that is a bunch of bins that hold a bunch of fasteners, screws, nails. On top of that is all of my glue, anything that I may need for glue ups. Catch all area, my electronics and unfinished project area. So this is where everything gets dumped basically. I have a bunch of router bits back here, some extra microphones, all my charging stuff happens pretty much right here for the camera. All unfinished projects go here that need to get done. Yeah, so anything that doesn't have a home and is small is probably gonna go right here. Next to there is my dust collector. This is a Jet DC 1100. VX, but it doesn't always get turned on so or connected properly. So there's always gonna be a lot of dust in this shop and shavings on the floor, but it is a great dust collector when it's on. Next to the dust collector is my Delta drill press and a one inch belt sander. I have no idea what brand this is. I got it from 20 bucks from my neighbor and this thing was 50 bucks at a garage sale. Works awesome, no complaints right now. It's a bench top and maybe one day we'll upgrade to something bigger and fancier, I guess. But for right now, this works well. Moving over to the last corner of the shop is where I have my planing and sanding machines. So this is an oscillating sander by one. This was a Christmas present, so it was free. And then three days after that, a buddy of mine gave me this Ryobi, which was also free. So I have one set up with a drum and one with a belt on it. Next to that is my DeWalt DW735 planer. It's an absolute beast. I cannot be happier with this thing. I had an old Delta before this thing and 
it doesn't even compare. The finish that you get from this thing, even with a straight gutter head, is incredible compared to the old machine. And I did splurge on this thing and bought it brand new because I needed it for a project and I needed it right there, right then. And didn't want to look around for a used one, so I picked this thing up and awesome. And if you upgrade any of your machines, I would highly recommend a planer because most of your pieces will go through a planer and the finish that you can get on this thing is just unbelievable. I love it. Above the Sanders is another wood storage area. This is a lumber rack and it holds everything from long pieces of plywood to a bunch of hardwoods that I end up keeping and even some dimensional lumber up here. All right, and that takes us full circle, guys, back to the assembly table and the tool wall behind me. And this is the Colmar shop, at least for another 30 minutes because as soon as this video's over, I'm gonna start packing this shop up and moving to a new one. Um, we just purchased a home on two and a half acres, about 30 minutes north of here. And the plan for the shop is temporarily, I'm gonna be in a three car garage this year until we can put an addition on the house. And then after that's done, we're gonna be building a brand new workshop space for me, which I'm extremely excited because it's gonna have at least thousand square feet, potentially two story, gonna have a metal shop area and a wood shop so I'm very excited about it but yeah this is it for this shop that's crazy it's just starting to sink in that this part of my life is over and a new chapter is starting which I'm extremely excited about there's gonna be a ton of content coming out DIY stuff with the addition with a kitchen renovation and, and probably a ton of other renovations that are gonna happen in this home but Make sure you guys subscribe, hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of the videos coming out because I want you guys along for the ride so you see what's going on so that you can do it as well because guess what? If I can do it, so can you. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience in this shop. I can't wait to show you guys what's next and I'll see you guys next time. Well, it's official. We just bought a house. Yeah. So we're going there right now. We'll show you guys the house and where the shop's gonna be and everything, so.